Hi everyone, welcome back. This is a continuation of our discussion from the last tutorial where we looked at how we can use Python to semi-automate uh, shoal analysis. I say semi-automate because fully automated is not completely reliable in detecting SOMA automatically, right? So we said, okay, let's do that part manual and then go ahead and perform the shoal analysis. This is a continuation of that tutorial where we are going to focus on uh, actually merging information or uh, aggregating the information for, uh, when I say information, the shoal profiles. So hopefully this video, you found this in your subscription list. If not, you should have subscribed to this channel. It's not too late. Go ahead and pause the video right now. Hit the subscribe button. And if you are feeling extra generous, find that thanks button that you see up there. Okay, so the discussion is about aggregating shoal profiles. I'm not talking about automating shoal analysis on the multiple images and storing all the results separately. Of course, we are going to do that as part of this exercise, but on top of that, how can we combine the information from all these multiple neurons if you're trying to look at uh, the collective insights that you're actually getting from these? Well, first of all, uh, let me go to the next slide. I think I... I, I created a couple of slides to walk us through this process. And uh, uh, who to combine shoal profiles? <laughs> Sorry about that. I should have said how to combine shoal profiles. Uh, different neurons have different sizes, right? This is the challenge. That means they lead to different maximum radii in their shoal analysis. Because when you do your shoal analysis, you have different, because the image have different sizes, the maximum radii is different. That means the way you are dividing the radii between your shoal analysis circles, it's going to be different. So how, how do you combine that? How do you combine that information? This is very simple. This is basic math uh, that I'm talking about. It's not any advanced trick or anything. So how do we combine that? Well, I automated the challenge, so. <laughs> okay, the need for common ground. Basically, we have a need for common ground here because to compare these profiles, effectively between all these multiple images, we need a way to kind of bring them to the common, well, they're already in the common coordinate system, but to a uh, standard radii across all of these new neurons. So this is where we kind of add this interpolation steps. Again, this is a very small step, simple math, like I already mentioned. So how do we do this? Well, first you identify the largest radius. So what is the maximum radius used in the shoal analysis across all of these neuron images? and then create a common set of radii. So you establish a standard set of radii. So go from the smallest to the largest radius in, observed in all of these, and what are the standard set of radii? Like it can be the radii of, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever that thing is, you have to map that. So what if you some of the images don't have 10, 20, 30, but they have like, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, because the image is smaller or larger, you know, on larger images, you may have 20, 40, 60, 80. So how you go, you know, from, uh, from one image to the other depends on the image itself, right? So for each neuron, interpolate the intersection counts to estimate the value at these radii points, at these common radii points. Let's say you establish 10, 20, 30, 40 as your common radii points, then you have to end your data, you don't have it there, you have data at five and 15, you probably have at 10, but let's say you don't, then you kind of interpolate uh, that value. That's all, it's just filling the gaps. And then now each neuron has the counts at the same radii, regardless of what the size is. Now we are ready to compare it. Uh, this is a direct comparison. That's, that's it. This is what I wanted to highlight. And uh, this will be a short video. Let's go ahead and jump into the code. And I walked you through bulk of the shoal analysis code in the last video. So that remains the same, except now we are dealing with shoal analysis on individual images saving the results and combining those results using this interpolation step. That's pretty much it. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our code. And I explained all of that again as part of uh, you know, my file that I'm going to share. Again, the link is going to be down at, uh, under, under in the description. Usually uh, I, post the, I post the link after the video is made public. So it, there may be a few hours after the video got published you know, for you to find this code. Uh, because I release videos at, I don't know, midnight my time or something. So you guys on the Eastern 
very east, you know, Japan's and China's and India's, you know, you have the video earlier, <laughs> even before I get up. Okay, so what are we doing here? Again, in the last video, we saw that, okay, we are getting SOMA center. And uh, here I, I completely am not doing the auto way, automated way, because we have different images right now in a directory. So right now I have three images, the ones I showed you the last time, all in one directory, you may have multiple. And we are gonna open each one at a time where I am going to pick where the SOMA location is and the analysis, the rest of it is uh, manual. So that's what this uh, method is doing over there that function is uh, designed to do. So select SOMA and as you can see, set mouse callback. So it's waiting for the mouse and uh, and we are actually picking the, sorry, the, the left mouse button down and wherever I click, it's gonna get the coordinates, give it, uh, hand it over to the next step. Okay, now we also need a function to process the image because now we are doing multiple images. So I'm reading the image in grayscale and uh, converting that into binary and then skeletonizing it. And now it gets the SOMA center, puts the uh, image. Now in this case, I'm running the same process for all images but you can change the code to actually, in this case, I think the combining the interpolation kind of doesn't make that much sense, right? But still, if you change the radii for different images, which is what you should be doing, I am not doing here. Uh, in fact, you should provide this radius, uh, max radius probably, uh, or the interval here as an input to process image. And then you can define that for various images saying that, uh, Hey, for each image, also ask me what the radius needs to be. That's another thing, modification you can do. In our case, we're not doing that, but okay. So for uh, each of these, uh, we are going ahead and looking at the intersection, meaning where my circle intersects with the skeletonized image, uh, the skeleton part, meaning there needs to be a count there, like not zero, non-zero value. In our case, it's probably 255 value or one, I forgot. Uh, and, uh, and and that's how what we are counting. That's it for each of these images. And then it comes down to uh, plotting the results. Okay, so down here, and uh, I have a function for aggregating profiles. I'm plotting the results for each image, by the way, because as I click the SOMA, I want to see the results right here on the screen. Uh, but once all the images are done, we are aggregating. This is the aggregating profile steps where the max radius, uh, common radii, you define the common uh, radii right there, and then you kind of perform your interpolation between the points for each of the uh, data points that you have. Uh, and that's it. And then we are going to plot the ag aggregated results two different ways, one looking at the mean of these, the other one actually looking at what the, what the uh, you know, what the range in terms of uh, these, these uh, the spread of these uh, values are uh, for the number of counts. Okay, so that's a lot of talking, but hopefully not something useful to you guys. So let's go ahead and run this so you see exactly what's happening uh, in action. I should have actually selected different radii for each of these, but again, I'll leave that to you. Okay, you see how it's opening an image right now, and let me define the SOMA location, okay? And now you should see some plots here that, because I wanted to see those before selecting the next, next uh, SOMA. So there you go. So that's what's going on. And now once the analysis is done there, it's opening the second image. I wish all of this is fully automated by detecting SOMA using traditional methods is challenge. Detecting SOMA using deep learning where the images look this different. You see how it's so large. This is high resolution image. Then it's not, it's not easy. If you're working with a bunch of images, all are similar, collected on the same instrument, all are all uh, uh, similar, then, then this, this is easier. Okay, so now all these are done, now it's plotting actually the aggregation part. So let's go through the results one by one. So first thing first, this is our original image skeletonized and the circles overlaid. You can print this and do manual counting if you want. <laughs> And here is uh, the show in a number of uh, intersections versus as a function of the radius plot. And uh, here is the plot for the next one. I mean, I should have showed you the image and the third image is right here. And this is the plot. And here is the combined information. 
uh, for all of these and this is probably a more meaningful one so we have three images showing like all the three plots right there and this is the mean plot of all of these this again makes just probably doesn't make sense in this case where we have like a uh, a uh, you know very different magnifications different instruments that collected these i these are the ones i found during my google search so i'm using this i don't want to use any other proprietary images uh, so now um okay i'm i paused there to see if i should push the next part into a different video i don't think it makes sense so let's go ahead and cover that in this tutorial which is what if you have a bunch of neurons in a single image okay so for example i have this image where you see a whole bunch of neurons right there how to perform this type of analysis now we need to select a whole bunch of these uh, soma centers again this is a 3d image it'd be nice to do 3d analysis right so uh, uh, I keep thinking about okay that should be one of my future videos or something but uh, I'll 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 write it down. Okay, with this image let's uh, let's focus on 2D. Let's not waste any more of your time. So let's go ahead and run this. That's the image I'm uh, actually loading as part of this analysis. So it should open up that image any second. And now let's go ahead and click. I changed the code such a way in this case again I'm going to share this code obviously. I changed the code such a way that I actually put these marks because this is not just one multiple. So I just want to make sure I, uh, because I have trouble focusing on, hey, did I already click that? And I don't know, shall we do two of these side by side? If you want, you can do that, but uh, let's just do this. Uh, ideally, again, 3D would be amazing for this one. Uh, let's just identify one. Let's do a couple more. Let's do this. Let's do this. So there are multiple of these and let's also do this. And oh, I missed this one. You probably are yelling at me saying, hey, you missed one here. You missed one there. <laughs> OK, so let's let's focus. So that's it. And after I selected 15 of these and I believe uh, what did I do in the code Q? Yeah, so I type Q. So it kind of continues. And this was quite fast, actually. So there you go. So this is the result. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. So you can see all our 15 profiles and then the average profile right here. That's that's it. Rest of the code remains the same, right? So the only thing I changed here is uh, the ability to uh, select multiple times, basically. Uh, the window that pops up where you can select these multiple times and uh, when you're done, go ahead and press Q, exits, and everything else continues. Okay, so even if you're non-biologist, again, there are little things that I promised, you know, that you will learn from these videos and possibly this is something that you learn, you know, how to click multiple times to get different types of information from your images. Okay, uh, in the next video, I am going to focus on tissue microarrays and de-arraying them. And I don't know if you, the audience who are watching this, are uh, you know interested in that, but someone asked me about it. So I created a couple of videos on that topic and also working on the cores that are extracted. If that's of interest to you, again, please join me in the next tutorial. And uh, of course, subscribe so you know when that tutorial comes out and enable the notifications, of course. Okay, thank you very much and let's meet again in the next tutorial.